Okay, we'll start recording. This session, uh, this mini lesson session is going to be about how you can use Infinite Campus for uh, teacher, parent teacher conferences, and I'm going to go over a few reports as well that you might find helpful. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to go ahead and go, remember for the teachers to go to the Kemper website, you mouse over who we are, mouse over technology, and then the Infinite Campus teacher login is right here. That's the link that teachers uh, could use if you're away from your from your desk, uh, you know, because most of you already have a shortcut, and we sort of went over to how to do a shortcut a while ago. This login down here is the portal for students, not for teachers, okay? So I'm going to um, grab my campus instruction, and I have a class up here. I've logged on as a teacher. Um, in fact, I'm borrowing Nancy's because I might as well. Plus, she has a course here where she doesn't have grades, and I didn't want to, like, uh, record someone's grades. That would be a little bit of a, uh, okay. that would be a little bit of a, you know, privacy deal. So one of the first things and the coolest things I think that um, Infinite Campus can do, especially for conferences, and most of you will have laptops available during conferences that you can use, but let's say that Daniel, um, that Adam Daniel's parents have come, and I want to do their conference. So if I look at Adam, there's a little arrow right here. There's a little blue arrow. If I click that little arrow, more information of Adam shows up. And if there was grades here, those would show up as well. But then what the really cool thing is, do you see here where it says hide others? That means that if I click that, all the rest of the students' grades go away, and I only see Adam Daniels. So again, this is really nice for when you have your laptop available at conferences, turn your screen, show parents, um, and you can go through and discuss all of their grades and what's going on. You know, from here, the tools, you can get rid of those and you just your assignments would show up there too, that chevron there. Now, the, good, the next thing is that you can click this next and it brings up the next student in the line if that's if they come alphabetical order, which you know they won't. But if you want them back, you click show all. Okay, and so all of them are showing again, but to get rid of this being so big again, I got to click that blue arrow again to bring it back to normal. So again, those steps were blue arrow, hide others, then bring them back is show all, and turn the blue arrow. Really nice little tip that could be very handy for conferences. The next thing I want to do is talk to you about some reports along the side here. I'll make my screen a little bit bigger again. Um, one of the first ones is attendance. Um, I'm going to click on attendance reports attendance over here on the left hand side. And then there's this little drop down here. And I'm going to take a look at attendance register. You can go ahead and, you know, go into a certain class, first quarter, um, and then if you click generate report, that's up here at the top. It's kind of hidden a little bit. You think it would be down here, like, you know, generate this, but it's up here at the top always. And what that does is it's going to generate a report for me, and if I had absences and things like that in here, it would show that report. In fact, let me change to a different grade book. Oh, I guess I can do that in a tenants report. Let me try a different uh, grade book here. It's down the bottom I'm going to choose attendance register, and I'll choose a different class that I know that she's got some grades and attendance <coughs> and things in. And if I click generate report, okay, there's no one that's been missing. <laughs> Not a good example, but um, this would be nice to kind of show you, you know, who's been absent when. Um, and that's something if you have like someone that's absent all the time from your class, th then you can show parents that ledger as well. Mary, does that put all the students um, that have been absent on one sheet or will that break it apart into individual sheets? I believe, let's see, does anybody, you're going to have to test it on yours. The attendance register looks like it comes on one sheet. One sheet, all, st all students. Thank you. Okay. 
and it's nice. It's kind of almost like a grade book grid almost that I'm looking at um, Beth's from here. And so you might want to try it there too, but all of your students are there. And it, so it gives you a synopsis of, you know, the beginning of the quarter till now, which is kind Thank of nice. You. Yep. Another report, and there's some other ones here, but I'm just kind of going through those that I thought that you might find most useful. Over on the left-hand side, again, where it says reports, this time I'm going to click on gradebook. And the type of reports, again, I'm going to click the pull down. So there's several you can choose from here. One is flagged assignments. I don't know if you're flagging any assignments yet, but you certainly can for certain things. But there's one here for missing assignments, which is nice. Because, and it goes through all of this, you can click what you want to show, what you don't, all that good jazz, and then you can click generate report. Remember that generate report's always at the top, okay? So if I click that, it's going to generate a report for me and let me know, you know, this kid is missing this assignment. Okay. It's going to kind of go through the difference. Let's see. Does this, she have an actual student there? I don't think. Oh, yes. And it's one per student. Do you see that? So apparently, oh, sorry, we're picking on Allison. Sorry. <laughs> We'll get rid of her name. Okay, so it prints out one sheet per student. So like if I have five or six kids that are missing something, it prints out a sheet for each one of those. And from there, yes, you can print this because this is a PDF. And so if I just move my mouse down here towards the end of the page, let me see if I can get, get it to go away. See how it goes away? I'm sure I just moused over it so it came back. And if I just mouse in that corner right here, then I can print. So that's... That that's only if you're putting the flags on there, like, um, uh, what was it, L for late or M for missing? Exactly. So if I'm in a lesson plan here and I click the chevron here and I decide to use these terms here, you know, this is turned in, missing, late, incomplete, cheated, exempt, or dropped. So but if you leave it that, blank, it's not going to pick it up as it's a missing assignment. It may if there's nothing in the, you know, if there's no grade in that area, that will that I think it pulls from that as well. Okay. Okay. Um, another one that I looked at was student summary. And again, you can determine what you all want to see, but I'm going to click generate a report. Again, this gives um, a summary of each student. I think there's like one student in this class, that's why I'm only getting one. But it generates the report to let you know where they are. So it sort of gives you, again, like a little synopsis that you could print off if you wanted to. What did you click on that one, Mary? That one was student summary. And you found it under report It's under, is. yep, re no. Grade book, report, grade book. So there's, again, there's other ones that you can check here and look, section summary, student summary, okay? Grade book export is if you wanna export this out to like Excel or something like that. But I don't know how, why you would necessarily need to do that because it's generating a lot of reports for you. The next one I wanna show you is over here on the left again, reports planner. And one of those that I found helpful, again, in this drop-down is blank spreadsheet. I'm going to switch classes, actually, so that I can go to one that has more students in. Actually, I'm going to go over to this one. Okay. And I'm going to go back down here to planner and blank spreadsheet. And again, you can decide what section you want. Um, Nancy can, you know, I'm in Nancy's right now. She can choose any technology class. You can choose what students um, if you want. And then again, up here at the top, you've got to click that generate report. And what, what you get then is all the students' names and a blank spreadsheet. And I know that we could use, I mean, I use those till the cows came home in first grade when I used to teach and stuff too. So 
uh, this is really nice for like if they turn in things or you know do they have gum finds did you collect from those or you know if you want to keep track of anything this is where you want to go then textbook numbers. textbook numbers yep so again that was under reports planner the drop down was blank spreadsheet and then remember always generate report is it up here at the top Another, uh, the last one of reports I want to show you is under reports roster. And again, I'm just going down the left hand side. Under the reports, I'm going to choose again, this blank spreadsheet is just exactly what I showed you before. It's just under roster this time. One that I, we emailed out for you is one that Robin found. It's portal usage. You can set the dates, again, about what date you want it to go, but you can generate a report, and it tells you what students and parents, too, I believe, have been in the portal and checking things out, and how often. Okay, that's, again, under roster reports, reports roster. We're clicking the down arrow to portal usage. and then generate report. This one just shows students looks like this one, but I think that you can choose parents on there too. Hold on for a second, let me hop out of here. And students and parents, okay, yep, you're right, students and parents. When I did this on Elizabeth, it was kind of crazy. Of course, I'm in there a lot. It was like 58 times. <laughs> but I'm also checking other stuff. I'm not that obsessive about her grades, but I am checking other things. So that's why mine was in there a lot. Like I've got one that's okay. week two, 14. There's like a that's the number of times they've been in that week into the portal checking. So yeah. You need to update your grade book often yeah. back because there are special changes in there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's two rows. So the first row would be the kid and the first row would be the parent. Probably. That's good. The, way, the, the kid looks like that with the name. Yeah. All the parents are nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen, yeah, I've seen lots of kids in there. Yeah. Especially, you know, these kids have the app on their smartphone or their Android. And so you know how they are with apps. They can get into that lickety split and check their stuff pretty quickly. Do you really think quickly. that 171? I mean, I have a student with that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they check their grades 60 times in that week. Yeah. 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 I really need that. <laughs> okay, the other one I want to show you besides portal usage is roster labels. Roster labels. And again, I'm going to click generate report. So these are mailing labels. So if you mail anything home, it goes, notice it's to um, the student, and then look, just the first parent that shows up on their account, their name. It does not and will not show like Dave and Mary Trent. I know this is insane, but they do not have a system that can do that. That's not how their system set up. We have sent in amongst other schools have sent in that we want that request, that we want to have be able to print out labels that say okay. Dave and Mary Trent. Right now we can do to the parents of or to the guardians of, it should be, to the guardians of Elizabeth Trent. That's the only thing that we can do besides choosing one parent, which is the main parent and the student. So that's how they have it set up. If I had filled out, like I got two forms home, one with my name and one with Jack's name so we could access the kids' grades. I threw Jack's away or recycled it, whatever, but. It only pulls would, one. Would it, you wouldn't list them both if no. both registered? Nope. No, it pulls the primary okay. one, just the first one, yes. Mm. Yep, not my favorite. Trust me, I've complained. This also works for any labels you want to put on mailboxes or yeah. books or you don't have to have the parent or address in it. Right. 
Oh, you can yeah, because here where it says mailing, you could just do student teacher type thing. So if I generate that report, then it should just be the student's names and then the teacher that has them. And you can take the teacher off too. You can take the teacher off too. Oh, right here where it says include teacher. So if I want to take that off and I generate report, and now I have the students' names. Which is will nice. it format? I know you have a small class. Or will it format it for a sheet of labels? Will it make three columns? I believe it will. Okay. Um, the other yeah, thing, the other thing I kind of want to recap, and I know Nancy went over this the other night, um, but I'm not sure if she got it recorded. Is I want to make sure we talk about the message center, just real quickly. Up at the top here, the message center, this is a place where you can send out classroom uh, or class messages. Okay, so let's say that I want all the kids to know that there's going to be a test Friday. So what I can do is I can click new right here. I'm in the message center. You have to click on message center so that's gray up there and then click new. You can decide what kind of message you want. This is where you can decide if you want to do a grade message or a missing assignment message. This is just going to be a class message. Keep it under user because you guys don't have any other user groups. You can keep the template as new because you don't have any other templates. Down here you can decide where you want it to go. Inbox is the student's portal inbox. It is not their email inbox. Okay. Email is their school email. You can leave both checked or you can uncheck either one. It's up to you. You can set the delivery date on this too. So let's say that maybe I really just want this to go out tomorrow and not tonight. I can do that. Or maybe 4 o'clock is not the best time to send this out. Maybe I want to send it out, you know, at 11 o'clock, whatever. The sender's email. Notice I'm in Nancy's gradebook. It defaults to the teachers, but you could also change that as well. I would recommend you leave it the same so they know who it came from. You give it a, a, a subject, type in your stuff, test on Friday, period. If I had a link to a Google Doc, for instance, let's just say that this is my study guide I have for them, I could copy that link and then I could put it, sorry, my tools are in my way here. I could put in a link right here. So if I could say this is the study guide, I could I could uh, highlight that word study guide, click the link, insert link, and paste that in, and insert. So now they would have access to the study guide. Again, that's a Google Doc because I can insert a link. Now, if I don't have it on Google Doc, but I have a Word document, let's say, right here, add email attachment. So if I click that, then I can go browse for something that's in my documents and paste it in. Or it'll go in with it. So if you have like a Word document or a PowerPoint or anything like that, you can send it as an email attachment and it will go into the student's inbox, which is in their portal, and their email if you wish, or either or. Then, once I'm finished with that, I can test it out. If I test it, I can give myself, I can put in my email address here if I want, and say test, and that way I can see what it's going to look like when the kids get it, which is nice. That way it also helps you, like if you forgot something, or something looks goofy, whatever. And then when you're ready, you can click save. You can also click next. And next allows you to choose who you want this to go to. You can choose uh, if you wanted to also go to guardians and students. You can select all for the all terms. You would just probably do the one term. Um, you can click uh, collect all recipients from this section, which is all of the students. Or you can choose specific students that you want to send this to as well. So let's say that you part of your accommodations is that you're giving a special study guide for the kids that have accommodations, 504s. 
you can just go ahead and click the specific students that goes towards and send that to them. If you click next again, oops, I gotta do one or the other. I'm gonna do students for right now and guardians. I kind of feel like if you're gonna send it to the students, I think you should put, send it to the guardians too as a safeguard. If I click next, here it's gonna show me exactly what's going on. I'm gonna send it to 18 kids. Four of them have no device. 11 of them have their inbox process, which means 11 of my 18 kids have their portal activated. And this email notice there's 17 out of the 18, so that tells me one of the kids, for some reason, doesn't have a school email address, which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. that's weird. Mm. Or it's just not in the database. That's what I want to do. So, and then I can click send. I can also review my recipients right here, which shows me exactly who this is all going to go to. Because this class is an 18 of them. And if I click preview, this is what it's going to look like, the actual email. Yep, that one did. Yes, because I chose guardians. So those, even though it only lists one in the label, it will go to both in here. Exactly. Because okay. it's it's through email, not the address, not the home address. The only way to get rid of that is to go through and unclick one of the parents that have the same address in the same household, right? Um, not exactly. You really can't control that so much. It's more of on our end. It's what's in the database. So that was the complaint from some of my college English parents. They were getting yeah. two emails. I changed my name. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's just going to happen. Okay. Catherine, I'm click close on that. I want it to be lost because I really don't think Nancy wants me to send a little message out that there's a test Friday for her students. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'd like that. <laughs> Maybe in April I'll do that though, as little April Fool's too, right? Okay. Um, any questions you guys have? We have a question over here, and it's not. Maybe we're jumping the gun a little bit, but the question was. Where do we put comments, or where do we find our comment library, or do we have new comments this year? The comment library is in here, right here, where it says report card comments. Do we have to worry about this right now? No, and notice that I can't click on anything either, because what I have to do when we get close to the end of the quarter we're going to open up what's called the grading window. And what that does is that it allows you then to post your quarter grades along with your comments. And I believe when you click on there, once that's open, the list of comments will come up for you to choose from. Are, are these the same comments as we've had in the past years? Yes. Or, okay. It's, is it possible when we get closer to the quarter that you um, could send us a copy of that via email? Um, yeah, I will write that down. I think I can do that. I can't promise. <laughs> or print one out and yeah. send it I, over. I, I'll have to see if I can do a report that lets me do that. Because we would like a hard copy here because I know some highlight the ones they use most often. And yeah, I'm just wondering under grade reports if there is anything on comments. No. Okay. I will do that. I will see if I can send out comments. And right now it's just quarter time. Click now, Nancy. It doesn't do anything. It's not activated, right? Right. Hence, Mary. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's a long day. It's all right. That's all right. I'm from the. I'm the youngest of seven. I've been called every name in the book, but my right name. Yeah. Okay. So if there's no other uh, questions, then um, St. Lawrence folks, I do need to know who's all over there so I can put your attendance in. So we got Lynette, who else? Kathy Berg and Kathy Stipe. Okay, I will make sure that your attendance gets recorded. Thank, Thank you. you guys for uh, joining us. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now and then I'm gonna stop the